everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here, and I'm here to review Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. So, Star Wars Episode 1 is written and directed by George Lucas. It has the talents of Liam Neeson, Ian McGregor, Natalie Portman, Jake Lloyd, and Terrence Stamp. And the film is about these two Jedis, Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan Kenobi, escaping to go find allies. But then they run into this young boy who happens to be. Anakin Skywalker and Qui-Gon Jinn believes that he is the key to bring balance to the force. So before I review The Phantom Menace, my guest star Kevin from his channel See It in IMAX is going to review this movie. So Kevin, take it away. December 2015 is finally here and with it comes the arrival of Star Wars Episode 7. But before that arrives, it's only fitting that film nerds look back on where the story began. And with thanks to 22 Tiger Dude, I am here to divulge my thoughts on The Phantom Menace. The Phantom Menace is the first Star Wars movie I ever saw. I was about seven years old and didn't really fully understand what Star Wars was. The interesting thing is that save for a few things, I still pretty much like the same elements now from when I was growing up. Darth Maul, for instance, was then, and still is today, my favorite character, and I think that's because visually, he is one of the coolest looking villains I've ever seen. His makeup and costume design are fantastic, and every time I watch this, when the final battle sequence arrives, and those double doors open to reveal him, that voice in my head always says, oh yeah, shit's about to go down. And shit does go down. The final fight is amazing, and one of my favorite series of moments is when Darth Maul and our heroes are separated by the Red Force Field. We've got Darth Maul pacing, and the Jedi Knights pondering their next move. It is for me one of two times in this movie where I am, as a viewer, on the edge of my seat, scared for what's going to happen next. Another choice Lucas made well was casting Ewan McGregor and Liam Neeson. They are two of my favorite actors today, and they're both fun to watch here even during the wooden dialogue scenes. One of the more interesting aspects for me about this movie is the variety of environments the story takes us to. Be it the jungle, an underwater city, the desert, or a city with massive buildings. All of those environments help inform us about what kinds of people we're about to meet and what to expect of their behavior. The people living in the desert, for instance, are very aggressive and suspicious of other people. The desert is also home to my favorite scene, the pod race. Despite being almost entirely CG, it looks damn good. And the sound mix is one of the best I've heard for any chase. My notes for improvement fall under the execution of the story, the cinematography, the editing, and the CGI. Very much like with Peter Jackson and the Hobbit films, Lucas used advances in technology to his advantage, and more or less abandoned his philosophy on his first trilogy. As a result, Phantom Menace is chock full of environments and sets that are not real, and with budget affecting which parts get the most attention, some of the CGI looks good and some of it looks really bad. With regard to the cinematography, David Tattersall and Lucas went the route of wider shots from afar to capture the action, and as a result, there's a physical and emotional disconnect that makes most of the action scenes fall flat. Concerning the editing, several times, more so during the dialogue scenes, I feel like the cuts could have been faster, inviting more dramatic tension and greater urgency. Where are the editors of the social network when you need them? Last, but certainly not least, we have the execution of the story. When Lucas went to write The Phantom Menace, he had a clear idea of what he wanted to accomplish. Tell the origin of the boy who would eventually become Darth Vader. And most would agree that's a really good idea because there's so much to be explored there. The unfortunate part is that Lucas ultimately made Anakin, the boy, more of a secondary concern, and that as a result made The Phantom Menace less about the hero's journey and more about politics and no Star Wars fan wanted that. My overall feeling on The Phantom Menace is that it has its moments, but as we all know, Lucas could have done so much better. I give The Phantom Menace 
two out of five stars. Back to you, 22 Tiger Dude, and thanks again. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing The Phantom Menace. So, The Phantom Menace, I'm aware, is a movie that disappointed so many Star Wars fans, and it's a film that a lot of Star Wars fans really hate. And honestly, to my surprise, I didn't hate this movie. Now, I don't think it's a good movie, but I actually didn't hate The Phantom Menace. I do feel like while there are negatives to this movie, there are enough positives to this movie as well. So the first positive I actually have with The Phantom Menace is Liam Neeson as Qui-Gon Jinn. I think he is by far the best actor of this movie and he has the best character of this movie. I really cared about Qui-Gon Jinn since the beginning. You know, you could tell that he was a very good master to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And Liam Neeson just adds a great screen presence when it comes to this character. So I felt like he brought in a lot of personality compared to everyone in this movie. He actually had the most personality to the character, I feel at least. Now, I know Jake Lloyd gets so much criticism for him playing young Anakin Skywalker, but honestly, I think he's a really good young Anakin Skywalker. I mean, he does a better job than Hayden Christensen in Attack of the Clones. Yeah, but I do think he did a good job. I don't think he did terrible. I've seen far worse child performances, to be honest, and he doesn't even come close to being in that level to me. So I do think Jake Lloyd did a good job as young Anakin Skywalker. It was cool to see how Anakin is when he's younger, just to get like a little bit of an origin story from him. They could have explored more with him. He's He was more of a secondary thing when I really look into this movie. But for what they give young Anakin Skywalker, I thought the movie did a pretty solid job. I also thought Natalie Portman did a really good job as Padme. Ian McGregor, I thought he was just okay as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And the thing is that the script didn't give him really much to do here. He's not even really in the movie that much. And I feel like the only time Ian McGregor got to shine as Obi-Wan Kenobi is once we got to that climax Max, you know, with that lightsaber fight with Obi-Wan Kenobi, Qui-Gon Jinn, and Darth Maul. That's the only time I felt like Obi-Wan got to shine in the Phantom Menace. Besides that, he's honestly pretty much sidelined throughout most of this movie. So I don't really blame him for being okay here. I really blame more of the script. But luckily, he is actually better when it comes to Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. But over here, you know, Ian McGregor, he still did a pretty fine job with his role. Though. I really enjoyed the introduction of C-3PO because I really love that character so much. And that does go the same for R2-D2 because I've always really loved that character in the Star Wars movies as well. I also thought the pod racing sequence in The Phantom Menace was really cool. It was really exciting to watch. It was really cool how at times as Jake Lloyd was driving during the pod racing sequence that the camera gives you some of these point of view shots, which I always like it when movies do that giving you some point of view shots making it feel like you're the one that's driving and the thing that makes this scene even better to me is the fact that no score was playing all you saw was the pod racing scene with sounds to it but no score was playing it and i thought that added so much to that one scene it was very cool to watch yes yeah, some of the cgi was still pretty obvious there but i still really enjoyed that sequence so much overall and speaking of CGI, I did feel like some of the CGI in The Phantom Menace really blended well with the world. It actually did look good, sometimes at least. I did really like Darth Maul as the villain. I thought he was a very cool, interesting, badass villain. However, he is sidelined throughout most of this movie, and I feel like he doesn't really get to shine as this truly awesome villain until the climax. But whenever you do see Darth Maul, it actually is pretty cool. And the last positive I do have for The Phantom Menace is definitely the last 15 or 20 minutes of the movie. The climax was really awesome to watch, really enjoyed it, but of course, once we get to that point where we get to that big lightsaber fight, 
that's when I thought the climax got even more awesome. And it was just honestly very cool how that entire lightsaber fight was executed. It was very cool. There was tension to it. But with all those positives I did have with this movie, there are also a lot of negatives I have with this movie. And one of those negatives is that this movie actually is quite boring to watch. Like, there isn't really much that happens here in the movie like in the first half i feel like at least enough happens but once we get to the second half that's when the movie started to get far less interesting you know until once we get to the climax but before that throughout particularly the second half and some of the first half i did find myself bored watching this movie and that's just because the dialogue is so Land. It's not interesting. This movie is just going through political bullcrap that's not interesting at all. Really, I feel like where the dialogue is the most poorly written is when it comes to the scenes where everyone is just sitting around and talking about politics. Then we cut to the next scene of more people just sitting around talking about politics, leading up to another scene with people just sitting around talking about politics and it's just like it's not interesting i'm not into politics and this movie did not even make it interesting it just made it very boring also what the hell is it with basically everyone talking like robots it's like george lucas just told everyone to just talk like robots because i guess he finds that interesting like seriously you have everyone talking like Oh, he's the chosen one. Um, Padme, you must sign this treaty. But Senator Palpatine, it would not help my people. Like, they would talk like that, like, what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, man. Like I said earlier, Darth Maul, he's a very good villain, but I did feel like the movie was really sidelining him throughout the whole movie. You know, until we got to the climax where we got to really see how he is, I felt like most of the movie was just putting him on the sideline, not really making him shine as much as he could have as a villain though. Now, like I said, Natalie Portman, she was really good when it comes to Padme. When it comes to Queen Amidala, though, she feels so out of place. She was talking in this man voice. What the hell was she using? Like, George Lucas, what made you want to make Queen Amidala talk like a dude? It sounded so weird. And I felt like the performance actually could have been better if it weren't for that distracting Dude voice. That was just so weird. I don't know what went on there. Now, as I said earlier, some of the CGI looked good, but other times the CGI looked really awful. It really did not blend with this world. While sometimes it does, other times it doesn't. And when the CGI really misses, it really misses badly. But the biggest issue I have with The Phantom Menace, of course you know this is coming, Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks, for the idiot he is, he just has to touch things, be stupid, oh god that tongue thing when he sticks out like, look, 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 like what the, what the hell? What the hell? Why did he have to tag along with them? What was the point of this character? He adds nothing to the story. If you take him out of this movie, this movie would actually be the same. I saw no point in Jar Jar Binks, especially for the annoying idiot that he is. He's so obnoxious. There's nothing likable about him. And I honestly just wanted this character to die. So overall, guys, like I said, I didn't hate the Phantom Menace to my surprise. I felt there were plenty of good things to like in The Phantom Menace, but there are still problems with this movie. It's just a very forgettable and disappointing Star Wars movie. And I'm going to give The Phantom Menace 2 out of 4 stars.
So you guys in the comments down below, let me know what did you think of Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, and I would also love to give a huge thank you to my guest star, CN IMAX, for coming here to review The Phantom Menace. He's a very cool reviewer, guys, so if you haven't checked him out, I will leave a link to his channel in the description below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!